Welcome to my game room, guys. So we're doing something a little bit different today. I'm not doing voiceovers for this video. I'm just going to bring you guys along for the repair. And you'll be listening to somewhat of a stream of consciousness as I try and get this PS1 working. So uh, without further ado, let's get the repair started. I bought this console from eBay. And I'll flash the listing up on the screen. It was advertised as non-working. And it's got some video issues. I love it when eBay sellers pack packages like this. That's amazing. All right. Here's the system. It's still got the warranty seal on the back, which is always a great sign. And the seller of this listing said that it uh, it is reading discs, but it's got video issues. So let's hook it up and at least make sure that the optical drive is working. Ooh, we have a finicky jack. So I have to keep holding it with my fingers. Otherwise, it's just going to shut back off. I don't believe that um, the listing mentioned that anything was wrong with the uh, power jack, by the way. I could be wrong about that. And uh, yeah, there you guys can actually see that. Uh, the video is just shaky. Let me pop in a disc and see if it's at least reading the game. Uh, Ace Combat 2. Power seems to be steady right now. Nice, okay. So it looks like the optical drive on the system is working, which is great. Um, we'll take a look at the power port and see why it might be acting up. And uh, most importantly, we'll take a closer look at that AC coupling circuit and swap out that capacitor that's usually responsible for causing these distorted video issues. All right, let's get started. All right, this isn't a system where I'm terribly worried about preserving the warranty sticker, but since it is here, let's at least try. So just some IPA. There she goes. All right. Came out super clean. We should definitely be able to reapply that. So let's see. Um, Phillips number one. That that feels good. That sound of a screw cracking for the first time. Oh yeah. Flip the system over and cover should just slide right off. This is one of the easiest systems to take apart. Six screws and you're basically in. There is very little else holding anything else down. So this cable plugs right out. Then we have a ribbon cable right here. There we go. And then optical drive just comes right out. Metal plate comes out, and then we can just take the board out. Ooh. So that probably cracked off from the top case. Um, we'll see about gluing that back on later. Let's take a quick look at the power port. Yeah, the center pin is nice and solid. That feels good. Right there. That, I mean, that could be our problem. I think this just needs to be reflowed. Let's do the power port first, since it looks like we just need to reflow those three pins. And uh, then we'll move on to the video issue. I'm gonna go ahead and get both my hot air and my soldering iron ready. I don't need the hot air for the power port, but it will make our lives easier a little bit later when we're working on the uh, video issues. I think we'll use a nice big tip for reflowing the port, just make quick work of that. 
let's set the iron to 400. There we go. Turn that off. Let's get some flux on there. See how that turned out. You know what? I don't like the look of some of that pitting. It's very minor. Hmm. We might have a little short there. Let's do that again. I don't like how that looks. Is that a short between those two pins? Let's do a quick continuity test. Multimeter and diode mode. They are shorted. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's get some flux and clear that up. There's a little solder bridge right there. Let's just use this random ground over here. Ground, ground, no ground. Okay, that's good enough for me. Quick power test just to make sure the LED lights up. Power plug is in, system is on. So wiggling the cable and the power LED remains lit. That is definitely resolved. So that was the easy part down. Now this next part, what we need to do is extract this capacitor right here. This capacitor right here. Give this guy a second to warm up. All right. So I'm just gonna get the general area a little bit warm for about 60 seconds or so. And then we'll zero in on that component and yank it out. There we go. I just went to get the component tester and I realized that my main camera wasn't recording. So I just took a quick look at the footage and essentially the close up footage of me extracting the capacitor is missing. I have no idea what the hell happened there. Let's test this capacitor on the component tester. It should read 220 microfarads and it likely will not. So I'm just gonna hold it like this with my hand, turn this on and let's see what it reads. 165 microfarads. That's quite a bit off 220 and the ESR is extremely high, 25 ohms. I mean, this capacitor is basically dead. 
So let's take out a new capacitor. So this is a little assortment kit, and I believe we should have some 220s in here in several sizes. Uh, 220, 6.3. This is probably the smallest one that I have. That will definitely work. You could also use, so this kit also has a 220 10 volt and you can go higher in voltage. You just need to make sure that the capacitor rating is the same. Um, usually they get physically larger once you have a higher voltage rating. In this particular case, the 6.3 and the 10 kind of look the same, at least to my eye. Um, yeah, I don't know if that 6.3 is any smaller, but um, I'll just use the smallest one because all we need is four volts and 6.3 will be plenty to do the job. And just for the sake of comparison, let's go ahead and hook up the replacement capacitor on the component tester. All right, 220.9, that's right on the dot. And the ESR is much, much lower. And this is a really cheap component tester. I mean, there's some margin of error here, but it's not 25 ohms. So this is a good capacitor. Gonna use a little bit of uh, solder wick and some flux just to clean up the old pads. Those pads are looking super clean. All right, let's breathe in the pads. Flux is your best friend. Hot air. Now we need to be mindful of the polarity, so it needs to go in the exact same way that the old one came out. All right. Let's test this guy out and see if that has resolved the video issues. Place your bets, fellas. Yeah, baby. Amazing. Perfect. So let's put this guy back together. All right. Now, before I give this guy a bath, uh, I just want to figure out where the small peg broke off from, if it's worth trying to glue that back on or not. I think it's from the bottom shell and it looks like its only purpose is to align the bottom shield. So there's one over here and it looks like the one over here is missing. So it's not structurally important. It's not like it's keeping the optical drive lined up or aligned or anything like that. Like it is in the Sega CD, for example. Um, hmm. All right, let, let's not cut any corners. I'm gonna go get the epoxy. We'll epoxy this guy back in, um, and then we will put it back together. All right, guys, the system cleaned up really well. It was extremely dirty, and this is just soap and water. 
I'm a little bit torn about the back, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove these feet. They're pretty disgusting. They didn't clean up very well, and I'd rather not have them there than have them there looking like that. Let's get everyone's favorite, the Magic Eraser. Now guys, Magic Erasers are abrasive. This is a matte finish, so I'm not too concerned. All right. Now, you guys have seen me use this stuff in a couple of videos already, but please don't use super glue on your console repair, guys, or really any electronic repairs. Epoxy is so much better for this kind of stuff, especially when it's a structural component. This isn't really structurally important, but just as a matter of habit, that's what I like to use to repair broken plastic. So you have about five minutes to work with this stuff once you mix it and about one hour of curing before you can handle the piece again. Put a drop right there. I think that's it right there. All right, I'm not gonna move that for another couple of minutes and then we can take a closer look and then it needs to sit and cure for an hour. It is a couple of days later, new shirt. Um, let's just pick up right where we left off. The epoxy has had a couple of days to cure and we'll see how well that's lining up in a moment. And that's super solid there. So first thing to go back in is the bottom shield slots right in. Next we have the motherboard and there's our repair job right there. Top shield. And we'll go ahead and put on a new piece of tape for the optical drive cable. Now for the optical drive, we'll just attach the data cable first. Just goes in a little bit easier when you have some leverage. Then gently rest the drive down on the pegs and then attach the power cable. It is a good idea to tape this cable back down because you don't want it touching the bottom of your discs. Just like that. and nice clean cotton swab and very gently dust off the laser. Next, we have the top case. Now for the warranty sticker, if you mistakenly drop it on the floor and get it all dusty underneath, you can actually rinse it off with some water and just gently dry it with a hair dryer. It will become tacky again. And I cleaned this guy up off camera. Whoops. I think I'm happy with that placement. Just gently press that down. All right. Now, last but not least, the buttons. Let's apply some lithium grease to the moving parts. And there we have it guys, a fully restored PS1. We repaired the video issue by swapping out the capacitor on the AC coupling circuit. We reflowed the power port to resolve the intermittent cable issues. 
and we gave the case a good cleaning. Nothing left to do but fire this thing up. All right, let's test the system out. Here I have Spyro the Dragon. And there you have it, guys. All right, I really hope you guys enjoyed this project. It's a little bit different from my usual style, much less edited and a little bit more behind the scenes, but if nothing else, I hope this sets better expectations for some of you thinking of taking on projects like this, just in terms of what you can expect and the kind of things that happen in the background that you don't always see in a heavily edited video. I really hope you guys shop around for your used and broken consoles. It's a very satisfying hobby to get into. It's cheaper than ever with the kind of stuff that you can buy on Amazon and eBay. And uh, repairs like this are not terribly challenging. I did this exact repair on a very similar PS1 almost two years ago. It was one of the first console repairs that I worked on. And that's the beauty of working on some of these older systems because their problems are very well documented and they all tend to have very similar issues. So your chance of success is that much higher. I think definitely worth a smile. Yep. <laughs> um. I could try pretending like I'm ready to suck a big dick, like there's big channel too. Actually. No, I don't. Seems to work for the big guys. <laughs>